Hello, my name is Martin Fagan. I'm the archivist here at Strokestown Park um, and National Family Museum. We're here today in the library of Strokestown Park. Now at Strokestown Park Archive, we're very fortunate to have in our possession 38 rent rolls or rentals spanning 100 years from 1822 up until 1921. The National Library has additional uh, rentals from Strokestown Park in their collection. During the 19th century, many large estates like the Packham and Manhattan Estates at Strokestown were managed by professional estate agents. In this case of Strokestown, the estate was managed by the firm of Guinness Mahan of Dublin, and most notably by a man by the name of John Ross Mahan during the famine period. Guinness Mahan employed a manager um, called the Land Steward, who worked and lived in Strokestown, and he had a house on the estate called the Steward's House. It was the steward's job to oversee the running of the estate um, office, um, which was located in buildings where the archive is based today. One of the main reasons that these papers have survived was that they, were, that they remained undisturbed in these buildings for over 100 years um, until they were discovered here in the 1980s. The estate office was a professionally run operation which kept very detailed records and accounts of income and expenditure, transactions, correspondence, legal papers and labour returns. The Strokestown Park Archive is mainly made up of these papers. Central to their work was land, you know, the ownership of land, rental of land, land quality and improvements, and buildings and the produce of land. A rental is basically a snapshot um, taken of the land owned by the estate, uh, which has been rented to tenants. Our earliest rental, for example, dates from 1822, but it lists the names of the head tenants and their land holdings as of the 1st of November 1822. This here we have a rental here from uh, 1913 in front of me. And this is a, a rent book um, from stretching from 1892 uh, up until 1901. Rentals are arranged by townland. Uh, for each townland we have the name of the tenants, the size of their holdings, their annual rents, information on the date and length of their lease, how much rent was paid in a year, any arrears in rent. But occasionally we have other information contained in this observation column. So for example, if a tenant was evicted during the year, that would be noted here in the observations. Although the formats of the rentals change a little over time, and over the course of the century, they're similar enough for them to be compared with each other over that entire period. Now, given Ireland's unfortunate lack of surviving census records, we're also on the lookout for census substitutes. Um, in other words, documents that can fill in the gaps where census material has not survived. The rentals can do this because they list the name of tenants and their townlands. And if you have a run of rentals over a long time, like we have here at Strokestown, you can roughly work out when individual tenants die. And you can also see when uh, land or farms are, are passed from one generation to another. In the case of some rentals, and case of some researchers, they will be able to find uh, the name of their family members and link them to Griffith's valuation, for example, or also the 1901 census of Ireland. So they can make uh, connections between the rentals and those surviving census records. It's important to point out the limitations of the rentals as a genealogical resource, however. Going like a census, a uh, rental is primarily concerned with land and the rental of land, and it's not the people. Um, they only record the head tenants, in other words, the tenants who have a lease, have direct lease with the, with the estate. And one of the features and problems with Irish land holding in the 19th century was that land was often subdivided um, and sublet by the head tenants to uh, tenants below them. Um, and in turn, the land could be sublet all the way down to the labourer class who may not even have had written leases with their immediate lesser. In other words, at the time of the famine, land was rented by landlords to large middlemen and farmers who rented a portion to cottiers and again and then who may rented um, a smaller portion to the labourers. Now the labourers um, sometimes rented on a season by season basis. They lived in mud huts and they lived on a diet entirely consisting of potatoes which were grown on their small potato plots. This seasonal letting was known as con acre letting and it was these con acre tenants who were left completely exposed when the blight hit and uh, their potato crop uh, during the Irish famine. But there's very scant records of these um, lower classes of people um, in any archive really, and there's no mention of them at all on these rentals. It's only the head tenants that are mentioned. 
The rentals name the head of the household. In most cases, this is the father of the family. Now, occasionally women are also included in the names here if they had a lease directly with the estate. And this would be particularly the case with widows who may have had leases in their own name, but other family members are not included. So therefore the rentals don't list all the inhabitants of the estate and there are far more people living on the estate than leaseholders. Nonetheless, they are a valuable genealogical resource um, that can be used successfully by uh, family historians. Stroke cell rentals are also a great source of data for researchers who want to chart the changes on the estate from the 1820s all the way up to the 1920s. One could track the rental values of land, arrears in, um, in rents, the number of head tenants and also farm sizes. This will be particularly useful and interesting in examining the changes in land rental and use um, and plotting out the gradual decline of the estate, of Strokestown estate, in the decades after the famine. This pattern of gradual decline in the wealth and fortunes of the Irish landlord class is typical. Towards the end of the 19th century, land, uh, state land was sold, often with tenants buying their own plots from the landlords under schemes operated under the Land Acts and uh, the Land Commission. Now as part of this project, we've had our rentals professionally scanned and digitised. And some of these copies you'll see on this virtual exhibition. Now this gives us high resolution preservation copies of these unique documents. Having scans allows us to, to share these rentals more easily and widely and it reduces the handling on these original paper uh, records. The information in the records um, in the rentals has also been transcribed and put onto a database. This database along with the digital copies will allow us to better answer uh, queries from family historians and from historians. And the raw data can be shared with historians and it contributes to our long-standing aim of opening up this rich archival treasure to the world. Mm -hmm.